don't know what type of wood you guys have or what you cut, but what we have here, the fir, is a soft wood and it's got a lot of sap in it and it really gums up chains and such. You can see there's a chain I just used and it's all covered with uh, sap and goo, all types of stuff. And that the chain doesn't operate very well. That's hard to get off. But uh, what I do is just using that same gas, I'll just uh, uh, pour a little in here, put a little lid on it and then pull it out, let it sit all night and and that cleans it up really really good that gets all that sap broken off and pretty much just uh, is an easy solution uh, to keep those chains clean blow that bar off and take that gas rag what's left on it and just knock that down there and that sap will collect on the bottom of that bar up here I can't stress the importance of uh, keeping this stuff clean keeping an eye on it and especially these ports here seems to me for the common man uh, sharpening a chainsaw it's it's tough um, and the best system that I found to use as far as pound for pound uh, that, that just hits all the good spots is the little 12 volt Gramberg uh, sharpener uh, you get precision uh, you get the ability to uh, you can use it in the field because it's 12 volt you can click it onto your batteries it's a wonderful pro project uh, whenever I feature this in a video, there's always people that come in and say, oh, that, I can sharpen hand chain, I can hand sharpen better than that. That's nonsense. That's absolute nonsense. I don't use this because I can't hand sharpen a chain. I use it because I get a better, more precise grind with this than you can by hand. There may be one in 10,000 that could come close to the precision of a jig sharpener, but uh, most people aren't. One thing that I find is guys that think they can sharpen really good, I get their chains and I'll put this on there and I'll see just how far they're off. And they had no idea. Uh, it happened to me too. I thought I was pretty good at it until I started using this and it just, it, it just, just can't compare. The nice thing about this is it's not expensive. You can get into one for around $100, which is a lot of money. Uh, but if you cut firewood, if you cut eight, 10 cords of firewood a year, uh, that's a pretty small investment because to send your chain out to get it sharpened, what's it going to be? You know, over $20, probably somewhere between $15 and $25, depending on the bar length. This isn't, can't be compared with the, the big professional grinders, but you know, those are, it's not hard to get a thousand dollars into one of those. And you're not certainly not taking it out in the field. And, and this doesn't take any skill to use. It's really simple. Any of us can do it or the other ones are, you know, that's not the case. So uh, I, love uh, the little Gramberg sharpeners. So filing your teeth doesn't mean you're done with sharpening your chainsaw. Uh, just as important, it, you don't have to do this every time though, is to set the depth of your, uh, your depth gauges. Some people call these rakers. That's actually a misnomer. It's not, they're not rakers in the traditional sense, like a crosscut saw, they're depth gauges. The saw has enough power where it doesn't need anything to clean it out, it kind of cleans itself. Uh, but these keep the teeth from going too deep installing the saw. So this is a raker gauge right here and you'll get it you know there's different sizes for different size chains but what it does is it bridges the gap between the two teeth sits on the high points here and here and this is a filing plate a hard filing plate and you run a file across there and it's a no-brainer way to set your depth so you just set that on there run a file across there a couple times you can see we knocked the top of that depth gauge off there we have to hit every one of these reason being is look at that uh, tooth see that tooth is on an angle down like like this hard to tell but as you file it it gets shorter and shorter and shorter in relationship with the bar and those rakers well you know they just get higher and higher and higher so you'll find that you're pressing on your saw and it just won't cut you're just killing yourself on it so the depth gauge is critical now i don't file these every time but probably every third filing or so I'll take and knock these depth gauges. Now you can do this also with a Granberg, um, but I'll, I just want to show you the way that I kind of like to do it manually. It just takes a 
just takes a couple minutes. So that's about it, ready to go there. We've got a wicked sharp chain. I can put our side plate back on. Tension everything up, fresh gas and oil. And then I'll show you real quick, uh, uh, essential equipment for a faller, faller's kit. Things you should have uh, before you go out and tackle one of these big firs or any tree. Um, the little ones will kill you. Uh, so will the big ones. Sometimes the little ones are more dangerous because you get you start thinking, oh, I'm big time, big time logger, big time faller. I don't need to, I don't need to follow the basics and the safety rules for this little tree. I'll just knock this thing down and it'll come around and get you. Many a uh, logger around here has been killed and severely injured by a vine maple, something as small as that. The equipment you're going to want to have on your person when you're following these big trees, well, this is my kit anyway, it's not comprehensive. Guys with more experience may have different things, but I've used it for a long time and, and I've not found it wanting in any way. Chainsaw chaps. Um, I always use uh, the Steel Promark. They're top of the line, they're commercial, professional ones, fantastic. That's what most guys in the wildland service use. They are good. Are there other good ones out there? I'm sure there are, uh, but I, I, I like these because they have a pocket and they're just heavy duty, last forever. Wire goggles, so they won't fog. Safety goggles, uh, okay. Wire goggles, much better. My favorite is the traditional Forester's aluminum hard hat. These went out of, uh, these are traditional. I, I have a real attachment to these because, you know, growing up in the Pacific Northwest and forestry and in the forests, that's just, that's in our blood. That's who we are, who we came from. And this is so classic, traditional forestry. Forest Ranger is an aluminum hat. And fortunately, uh, they're making them certified again. So, yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm never go to a plastic one. I have to use a plastic one on wildland fires. Much to my chagrin, I would much prefer this because of some silly nonsense about electrocution. I've seen a lot of high voltage wires in the middle of the forest. Uh, but, well, yeah. Earplugs, uh, muffs aren't gonna work because you have to have a hard hat, so earplugs. And a faller's belt. Your faller's belt, you're gonna want a few things on it. Uh, a good sturdy belt uh, that you can wear over your pants. This is not the one that you're gonna be threading through your belt loops, but wearing like a gunfighter style. First thing is a tape, uh, a real tape, a logger's tape. This will help you, or this will allow you to, to determine your lengths. Also, what's nice about these is they have a circumference measurement on the back, so you can wrap them and use the back. It'll tell you what the diameter of the tree is. The circumference wraps around it, tells you the diameter, so that's kind of cool, and that wears on the right side. On the back, uh, a uh, this is a Grizzly Peak, the aluminum, handmade in Idaho, love them. Uh, axe sheath with a short handled axe. You want something heavy because you're primarily going to use it to be pounding wedges. So something with a good flat pole on it and a short handle. So a boy's axe is a nice fit for this. My Grand Force Brook small forest axe, I have used that a lot. It's a little bit light when you really need to put some, put the Swede on the, on the, on the wedges. And then a, a, at least two wedges carried in, in some sort of a way. This is again the Grizzly Peak my favorite there. Shout out to my man in Idaho there. If you want a good product, handmade, these are the best. And that holds two wedges, so you can get a couple wedges in there. And then of course your power saw. But that is your basic faller's kit.